All right, Resus Exer, Salim Rezaia here again, and this time we're going to be talking about norepinephrine. How high can you go? So I posted this question online on both X and on YouTube, and I gave a series of four answers, just arbitrary, but 0.5 micrograms per kilogram minute, one microgram per kilogram minute, two micrograms per kilogram minute, or there is no maximum. And as you can see, most people said there is no maximum, which by the way is the correct answer. At my hospital, the cutoff is arbitrarily at 0.5 micrograms per kilogram minute, but I've had some patients that I've had to go higher than that. And when I ask around, it seems like the answers are all over the place. So let me start off by telling you there are no randomized clinical trials on the maximum dose of norepinephrine. There are a handful of retrospective studies and one case report, and I'm going to go through all of them pretty quickly here with you. So the first one is survival after shock requiring high dose vasopressor therapy published in chest. On all of these, by the way, I will have the PMID numbers at the bottom of the screen so you can pull them from PubMed for yourself. This was a retrospective study. The author's last name was Brown, published in 2013, 443 patients with varying types of shock. High dose norepinephrine in this study was defined as greater than or equal to one microgram per kilogram minute. 17% of patients survived at 90 days despite being above that dose. 8% had digital necrosis. When you go through the paper and try and find what was the highest dose that was given, it was about 1.8 micrograms per kilogram minute. And when you look at the median duration in survivors, it was 122 minutes. The one thing this paper does confirm, though, is that if you're having escalating doses of vasopressors, stress dose steroids are associated with increase in survival. Here's the second retrospective paper, high dose norepinephrine treatment, determinants of mortality and futility in critically ill patients. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that author's last name, but this was also published in 2013, another retrospective study, 113 patients with circulatory shock. In this paper, high dose norepinephrine was described as greater than or equal to 0.9 micrograms per kilogram minute. 34% of patients survived at 28 days. The highest dose they got to in this study was 2.91 micrograms per kilogram minute. And when they went back and did all their kind of analysis and looking at high dose versus low dose, basically the norepinephrine dose or duration was not predictive of 28-day mortality. Paper number three, norepinephrine, not too much, too long. Another retrospective study, 324 patients with septic shock, high dose norepinephrine defined as greater than or equal to one microgram per kilogram minute, the highest dose reached in this study was 1.4 micrograms per kilogram minute. There was a 48% in-hospital mortality, which means 52% of people survived despite being on that greater than one microgram per kilogram minute. Now, this was an interesting case study or case report. It's titled, Should the Norepinephrine Maximum Dosage Rate Be Greatly Increased in Late Shock? This is a case report of a patient published in 2016 who got an injury from a blast and had severe hemorrhagic shock. And despite the high doses of norepinephrine, this patient survived with no perfusion-related organ damage. Look at the graph. They went all the way up to 30 micrograms per kilogram minute. They were in the dose range of 22 to 30 micrograms per kilogram minute for a total of four hours. I've never even seen doses this high or ever given this high, and this patient had no necrosis and no organ damage despite it. The last study was outcome of patients with septic shock and high-dose vasopressor therapy. This was another retrospective study. Lead author, last name is Ochit, published in 2017. 106 patients with septic shock, high-dose norepinephrine, defined, like many of the other previous studies, greater than or equal to one microgram per kilogram minute. And you can see 40% of patients survived out to 28 days. 
The highest dose they got to in this study was 2.3 micrograms per kilogram minute, and the median duration of survivors was 84 hours above this greater than or equal to one microgram per kilogram minute. And they did report digital limb necrosis at 5.7% in this study. So these are not randomized clinical trials, but I like to summarize things. And I realize the populations are all different, but I asked a very specific question. Norepinephrine, how high can we go? When we review these four retrospective studies, the highest dose that is recorded in the evidence that I could find was 1.4 to 2.91 micrograms per kilogram minute. And then we have that one crazy case report where they actually got up to 30 micrograms per kilogram minute. Survival, despite being at these greater than one microgram per kilogram minute, was anywhere from 17 to 52%. So these patients do survive despite these high doses. Now, when we look at the duration that these patients were greater than one microgram per kilogram minute, it was anywhere from three to 84 hours. And then the only two studies that reported the digit limb necrosis was anywhere from 5.7 to 8%. Now, that being said, I am not sitting here advocating for you to use these crazy high doses of norepinephrine. It should be the rare time, and there have been times I've had to go this high, at least to the two or three micrograms per kilogram minute, but I can maybe count them on one or two hands. I think if you're starting to get escalating doses of norepinephrine, you should start assessing for causes and stop just going up on the drip. So first of all, do you have an accurate blood pressure? If you don't have an A-line, I would place one. If you do have an A-line, make sure it's working correctly. There's not bubbles in the line. Transthoracic echo is going to be your friend here. You can look at LV function, and if it's down, you can start inotropes. If the RV function is bad, you can start afterload reducers like inhaled nitric oxide and also inotropes to help support some of that inotropy of the right ventricle. Is the patient hypocalcemic? Do we need to replace calcium? Are they hyperkalemic where we need to shift them? Source control, CT, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. These patients are usually intubated. They can't talk, they're sedated. And so there have been a handful of times where we've thought we've had source control and we sent the patient down for CT, chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and we end up finding some intra-abdominal abscess or osteomyelitis or something that just was completely unexpected as the cause of the hypotension. Acidosis, I think we all love and hate acidosis. Consider bicarbonate drips, consider CRRT or hemodialysis to correct this because your vasopressors will just not be as effective the more acidotic the patient gets. Sedation, maybe the patient's just super sensitive to Presidex or Propofol. Maybe we need to think about changing our sedation up or maybe using some adjuncts like fentanyl to reduce the amount of sedation medication that we're starting to use. And then rare, rare, but adrenal insufficiency. Consider high-dose corticosteroids to supplement them. Now, this is not an all-encompassing list. I've had people reach out to me after the poll and saying, what about hypoglycemia? What about a low thyroid? And so those are also good thoughts. But again, this is just a starting point that it is not common to get to these high doses of norepinephrine. So my parting thoughts on the max dose of norepinephrine. There is no max dose of norepinephrine, but it should be the rare time that you need it. Now, in my practice, and people may be a little bit different than me, but if I have an escalating dose of norepinephrine, I'm thinking somewhere around that range of 0.2 to 0.3 micrograms per kilogram minute. It's not a hard cutoff, it's just a trend that I see. I'm starting a second vasopressor, usually vasopressin, and I'm starting to throw on stress dose steroids like hydrocortisone, 50 milligrams, Q6 hours. And then I'm starting to assess for causes because I can't tell you the number of times you get these calls and you just go up on the dose or the nurses go up on the dose appropriately because we give them goals of what we're trying to reach. And actually there's something else that's going on. So always go and assess patients when you have these escalating doses. There you have it, resus exers, norepinephrine, how high can you go? There is no max dose. I'm curious to see what kind of ruckus I've now caused over there, Haney. I'm curious what people's thoughts and questions are. I hope this stimulates some debate and some more conversation. Thank you again for inviting me. 